Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today I'm going to answer the question, how does water hydrogen bond? Meaning I'm going to focus on what aspects of water, that molecule, uh, what's the chemistry behind it that allows these forces, these hydrogen bonds to exist. So first, let's start by looking at water. I've got a water run up here. Remember, water is H2O, two hydrogens, and oxygen. And I'm going to be talking a lot about these bonds right here. So let me kind of draw some arrows right here. These bonds are covalent bonds. And you might be wondering, why are we talking about covalent bonds? We were supposed to be talking about hydrogen bonds, right? But really, it all goes back to these covalent bonds. So let's start now over here. First, you have to realize that oxygen is much more electronegative than hydrogen. If you haven't learned about electronegativity yet, it's something that you really do need to try to understand. Um, it's going to come up in your chemistry classes. Electronegativity is a measure of how strongly an atom will pull on electrons in a shared bond. So for example, back to our covalent bonds over here. Remember covalent means that the electrons in those bonds, there's two of them in each of those bonds and they're shared. So the oxygen and this hydrogen are sharing these two electrons and the oxygen and this hydrogen are sharing these two electrons. And because oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen, it results in unequal electron sharing. If you have two atoms that have very similar electronegativities, um, so identical electronegativities like a bond between two chlorine atoms or between two hydrogen atoms, or even a bond between two different atoms that just have very similar electronegativities like between carbon and hydrogen, for example, those bonds, the electrons in those bonds are shared equally. But when you have a partner like this, where oxygen is much more electronegative, it is going to pull, I'm going to draw some other little kind of arrows right here in blue, it's going to pull the electrons in these bonds toward it much more strongly than the hydrogens are. And so this unequal electron sharing leads to regions of partial charge. Remember, I'll write it right here, electrons are negatively charged. That's why we write them like that with a, an E minus. So electrons are negatively charged. And so when you have these electrons that are being pulled more strongly towards that oxygen, it results in partial charge. What I mean by that is we've got these electrons spending more time on this side of the water molecule. They're being pulled toward that oxygen and they're spending less time on this side of the molecule with those hydrogens. So that means those electrons, which carry a negative charge, they spend more time kind of up here. That results in partial negative charge on that oxygen. So even though this is a neutral molecule, there's a partial negative charge up there over, you know, in that region where the oxygen is. This symbol right here is the Greek letter delta. It's a lowercase delta, and that is what we use to indicate the partial. So it's not a full negative charge, just a partial negative charge. Likewise, the hydrogens have a partial positive charge on them. And this all goes back, again, to oxygen is so much more electronegative that it tugs on those electrons in the bond um, even more strongly than the hydrogen does, and that results in this charge separation. So with a water molecule, even though it's a neutral molecule, you have a part of the water molecule that's partially negative and a part of the water molecule that's partially positive. So that's our partial charge. Now, the opposite charges attract. That's what opposite charges do. Now, I'm not talking about these being attracted to these. I'm talking about between two different water molecules. These interactions, so these opposite charges attract, and this is again between two water molecules. So let me actually draw up 
some other water molecules up here now. So I'm going to draw another water right here. While I'm drawing these water molecules, um, I want you to make sure that you understand that the covalent bonds in all of these, the covalent bonds that join the oxygen and the hydrogen, those are what are known as intramolecular bonds, intramolecular bonds. That means within a molecule. So within the, between two atoms of the same molecule. That's what these covalent bonds are. Let me draw a couple more right here. And then on the other hand, hydrogen bonds, these hydrogen bonds that I'm gonna write in right here, these are the result, these hydrogen bonds are the result of attractions between the partial negatives on one molecule and the partial positives on another molecule. So let me now go on and write all of these hydrogens have a partial positive. And all of these oxygens have two units of partial negative. And again, that's because they're pulling on the electrons in two covalent bonds. Okay, so now I've got all of my regions of partial charge drawn. And now I'm going to draw my hydrogen bonds. Okay, so again, the hydrogen bonds are the interactions between the opposite charges, the opposite partial charges, on two different water molecules. So I'm going to draw this as a green dashed line. I've got one right here between the partial negative of this oxygen and the partial positive of this hydrogen. One right here between the partial negative of this oxygen and the partial positive of that hydrogen. One right here between the partial negative of this oxygen and the partial positive of this hydrogen, and one right here, between the partial negative of this oxygen and the partial positive of this hydrogen. So I want you to take away a couple of things here. Again, the covalent bonds are intramolecular, so within a molecule, between two atoms of the same molecule. These hydrogen bonds are intermolecular. I'm gonna actually add that to our list down here of the properties of the hydrogen bonds. So they're intermolecular. They are between atoms of different molecules. Um, I also want to number them here. One, two, three, four. Every water molecule can hydrogen bond four times, can form four hydrogen bonds at a time. So this one right here, we've drawn its partners. You should realize that this one right here is also gonna hydrogen bond four times. So to this one, and then to three other water molecules that I haven't drawn. This one, hydrogen bonds to this one, and to three other hydrogen, or uh, three other water molecules that I haven't drawn. So you can have these huge networks. The, these, um, these hydrogen bonds, they are so numerous. I'm gonna draw a star right there, so numerous. And that's because every single water molecule can make four of them. They also are strong. Um, and when I say strong, I'm going to add a caveat to that, and that is they are strong together. An individual hydrogen bond, like this one right here, you know, it can break really easily, and another water molecule can come in, and this one can reform there. And so, and, yeah, and then this one could break again, and then this one could reform. And so the individual hydrogen bonds are not strong. Like they're not nearly as strong as these covalent bonds, but there's so many of them. So they're so numerous. And so when you have billions and trillions and quadrillions of them, they really add up. Um, and that makes them very, very important. So these um, hydrogen bonds, they allow water to do so many things. They allow water to be cohesive and adhesive, which is how water can move up from the roots, up into the stems, up to the leaves of, um, of a plant or a tree. Um, 
that that cohesive property is also what gives us water tension so that something can float on the surface of water or so that a little insect can walk across the surface of water. Um, they're also what enables water to have such a high specific heat, which means that it can absorb a lot of energy from the sun during the day and then release it at night. That makes areas around the coast and around lakes have those kind of balmy, um, enjoyable temperatures. They don't get as hot as a desert during the day and they don't get as cold as a desert during the night because all that water is there. Um, water um, enables life, you know, and it's because of these hydrogen bonds. That's what I really want you to realize here. So just sort of to summarize, how does the hydrogen bonding work? It all goes back to the fact that oxygen is more electronegative. That makes these um, but these electrons shared unequally, that gives us the partial charges, and the partial charges are how two water molecules can interact through the attraction of those partial charges to each other. Um, if you're interested in learning more about how hydrogen bonds and other bonds, things like disulfide bonds, ionic bonds, covalent bonds, disulfide bonds of course being a, a subset of covalent bonds, um, you can check out my video on four levels of protein structure to learn how these different kinds of bonds, including hydrogen bonds, contribute to our proteins having the correct stru structure and therefore being able to function correctly. Um, you can also check out, if you're interested in, in oxygen, you can check out my video on bacteria oxygen requirements to learn about the different kinds of oxygen requirements that different groups of bacteria have. Things like aerobes, anaerobes, facultative anaerobes, and so forth. But that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed, and thank you for watching Biology Professor.